Okay, we're back. Um, time to test out the plasma cutter. What I've done since we last spoke was installed the water pan. There's no liquid in here. I'm just going to fill it up with, with water just for this test. I had these um, these blades or what do you call them? Like the the ribs made that you sit the plate on. Oh, I'll show you what they're made of. These are a couple of spares over here. Um, as you can see here, they're just a bit of three mil plate. Um, they're cut to a spike, so hopefully, with the plate sits on top of here, it won't um, it won't cut the flat bar like like it would if it was that way up. Otherwise, it just starts cutting in there. So hopefully, it sits on top. There's quite a few of those in there. What have we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. There's 28 of these in there. I got two spares. Um, one mistake I made is in the bottom of this pan, I'll bring the camera down and show you. In the bottom of this pan, I. Right, so have a look down in here. Uh, where's the best view of it? Right here. In the bottom of the pan down here, you can see there's there's a bit of um, plate I had pressed up. And if you can see, I had a four mil slot cut in it, and these are three millimeter bits of um, um, like flat bars that I put in here. So there's a bit of there's a bit of play in them. So I'm not real happy with my decision on that. Um, what we've also done is. We have we have a drain plug in the middle. This is just like a like a bathroom vanity type plug. Pop it, press it to raise it and drain, and lower it back down. I can take this actual this blade or this bit of flat bar out, unscrew the top of it, blocks up. Um, I'll show you underneath what we've got happening under there too. What we've got under here is you can see. I have, I have a bit of drainage pipe work under here. There's the bottom of that um, sink plug or sink drain. There's a valve. That valve will take the whatever's in the tank or whatever in the pan straight down to this tank here. This is a this is a chemical tank. Um, I think they're. I don't. You don't see too many of them in Australia, but I think in America they use them on the front of quad bikes. They come with a, a bracket arrangement here for mounting them on the front of a quad bike. Um, has a little pump for pumping the um, the liquid back up into the into the top of the tank. What I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this pipe work here so I can get this hose. I'm going to I'm going to cut this off high, mount the valve, uh, put an elbow in this, and run this pipe straight this small pipe straight into the side of this bigger pipe above the valve. So. When I want to refill it, I'll shut that. I'll shut this valve. Let's turn this around here so you can see it. I'll shut this valve here, and this filler line will go in above it there. And this little 12 volt pump down here will pump the liquid back up into my pan. Um, so I'm thinking that should work pretty well. But for today, for today, I haven't got that sussed out yet. I don't have a. I don't have a shelf for my plasma or my um, my tank to sit on. I have tested the pump. The pump actually works off the 12 volt battery on my engine run stand over the back there. I'm hoping to get that work working at a later date. Um, just to kind of show you how flat all those blades are when they're all in line there across this table. I don't know if you can see that, but if I bring it down to just the right height there, you can kind of see I put a spirit level across there, and unless they're rocked over a little bit one way or the other, they're, they're like within a millimetre of being flat and true. Um, all this, this stainless steel pan, I had it custom made at a fabricator. They um, seam welded, TIG welded down the side here. I filled it with water, and filled it with water to test it, to make sure it was watertight. Um, it seems to hold water, no problem. So there's no leaks, no issues like that. Um, we're going to, I got a bit of plate cut here, purchased it on the way in from work. It's just a bit of six mil plate. Um, got it a bit cheaper because it has a lot of surface rust and shit on it, but um, 
not a lot, like it's still, it's still flat, um, like scale black plate here. They just guillotined a chunk off it for me. On the other sides, the other side's a bit worse, um, but that'll be the bottom side. It will just rust anyway when the, um, when the plasma cutter starts cutting and it gets wet. But yeah, I'll use this one. I'll do my first test cut. All right, there we have it. We have the, we have the pan filled with liquid. So that took, oh, I don't know, that was, I think it was 50 liters, 50 liters of water. And it's probably only halfway up that pan. It's just above the bottom rib there. Um, I didn't want it to splash too high. I'm gonna try and search for something that sort of fits on the side of this pan here, like a bit of a splash guard to stop it splashing everywhere when it gets, when it cuts a, does a cut close to the edge. But the yellowy color that's in there, I didn't have any proper, um, proper plasma cutter coolant or whatever you call it for in the pan. So I just used some of this, this is a, I had probably two liters of this Neulon um, coolant left in, in, the, in this bottle. So I just put two liters of that, so 100% concentrate. So um, well, four liters of this should make eight liters of, of coolant for your engine. I just, I don't want it for cooling purposes. I just want it for the anti-corrosion purpose. So if it splashes around, it shouldn't rust everything, hopefully. Um, but who knows, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So that's what I got in the pan there. Got the liquid in there ready to, um, ready to run. Okay, I got me a bit of plate on top there. That is a bit, piece of six mil plate. I don't know the exact weight. That's a meter by a meter square. I don't know the exact weight of six mil plate, but that thing had to weigh like 50, 60 kilos. Um, it was quite heavy actually, a lot heavier than I anticipated. But it's on the table. Um, I'm just, going to, I'm just going to square it up a bit to the size, make sure everything's sort of running plumb to the, to the um, runners, um, to the um, Y-axis runners. I'll just do that with a tape measure now and I'll just slide it along and make sure it's going to run right. So if I do any long cuts down the side, it's, um, it's in the right position. So we'll just um, measure to the side. We have 140 there. We have 130 there, so we'll just um, slide it across till we get that the same. We now have 135 and 134. Alright, 135 and 135. So I didn't square it to the edge of the pan here, but I'll see what it is anyway. Um, we're at 57 there and we're at uh, 65 there because the pan may not be sitting true I didn't actually check that it was sitting exactly right but it doesn't matter I've got plenty of room around the outside of it um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, move the camera around to a better location I'll open up and we'll zero the table and we'll we'll do a test cut with no no plasma cutter running right now so we're ready to do a like a dry run, it's not actual test cut. It's just, I've got the plate on there. I have the, um, I have the access zeroed into that position where we're over there. So I'll just show you on the computer screen here what I do for that process. So you can see, I'll just turn this around so you can actually see it properly. So hopefully you can see the mouse moving around here. So, um, you can see here these are all at zero so I can um, I can jog I can jog the the actual machine wherever I want to but if I come back to here and I say um, I hit this one here it says go to zero it'll say where do you want to go back to I tell it where it was which is this location over here so that's took, it's taken the X axis all the way, all the way across and the Y axis back to where I want it and the Z axis up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate, um, this is the first, this is the first um, test I'm going to simulate. So first thing I've got to do is I'm going to hit this button here. It says check size, right? So I'm going to make sure that when I hit that, 
the machine moves it moves the size of this item and it doesn't go off the actual plate so what I'll do is I'll hit I'll hit that on here and I'll, sh I'll have a look over there and I'll sh check out that it doesn't actually go off the edge of the plate so it's doing this now you can see it's moving doesn't go off the edge of the plate doesn't go off the edge of the plate comes back to its zero position so it's ready to do a cut there so that's a pretty good start so um, next thing I need to test out is I can hit this um, this button down here it says simulate so if I hit that button there simulate you'll see the cursor it kind of shows where the probe is it'll come across this direction it'll go inside that hole where it does the first pierce cut then it will sort of scoop back around and do that internal cut first then it will come across here go outside the square and um, do a do a, a, like a slice in then it'll do its um, external cut there or simulate that external cut so let's just hit that simulate button takes a little while because it's got to load the g-code there you go you can see it moving now I'll just zoom in a bit there so you can see it so this is actual speed that it's going to do it so you can see it take that little did a probe like it's probing the z-axis down to the touch of the plate does that cut you can see how the sort of cursor sort of points around the side as it goes around there so it's it shows you where the torch is it'll then go to there drop down to the bottom it'll, it'll come out and probe and it'll take its first cut it'll go around the square I know it's a bit boring but I was just showing you what it actually does so this should be actual cut speed so this is six mil plate so I'm kind of hoping that what it's set up for will do will do this if I have a problem you can see that stop um, simulation button at the bottom I hit that and it'll just stop it anyway wherever it is and you'll see it take this last corner here come around and there you go it'll do that so I haven't done this yet this is my first attempt at it so um, I'm going to hit this this button here called run the job and I'm hoping that it runs that job I haven't got the plasma cutter on so I'm hoping that all the probing and everything comes in and works properly if that all works properly in that location which we'll go over and watch after I after I hit run the job and if it all works right and I can hear the I can hear the relay in the electronics box clicking on and off well then I think we're on a then I think we're on a winner so I'll just zoom this back out again and we'll go over here I'll hit run the job hopefully this thing does what it's supposed to do I'm hoping there you go you see it moving over there you can see it running the um, the z-axis probe down now it'll touch the job you'll see this limit here will actually hit there you go obviously something didn't work right there I'll stop that and we'll um, try that again because it hasn't probed properly I'll stop that clear the alarm so something didn't work right then it didn't actually probe right so we'll um, I wonder what happens if I say go to zero will it bring everything back up instead of scratching the plate there right, zero isn't right it's zero the actual torch was down so over here what I need to do here is you can see here if I run the if I run that up that's z axis all the way up and then I hey, set zero so now where it is over there the torch is all the way up it should come across probe down till it hits that limit switch so we'll try that again let's hit run the job and try that one more time worst case scenario I have the emergency stop button down here which I can press if I need to so I really need to see that that probing limit in there 
go down, probe the job. So it hasn't done it, it's timed out. I don't know why it did that. Hmm. I'll have to work that out. Let me just um, stop this for a bit and I'll work out what happened. Okay, so I think we got this issue resolved. Um, when when the um, torch was probing, there are these adjustment bolts in the back in here. I don't know if you can see them in there, there's that one right, right there and there's another one over the back, those hex head, not those little um, in hex hex head ones in there so you have to adjust them to determine how high this touch off limit goes to um, I had that set um, too big so then as it touched off it um, it just dragged the torch around so I've done it now it has 3.2 millimeters of clearance so we're going to come over here again we're going to hit that Hit that tab again that says um, run the job. You'll see that that script will then start running up and down and then once it's loaded the job it will it will um, it will run the torch. Let's see what happens here. Hang on a second. Huh, battery's flat in my in my microphone. All right, anyway, let's hit run the job. We'll come across here and we'll watch it. Hopefully watch it do its stuff. So you can see there now it's coming down and it's probing. It'll come down and touch off on the plate. And it pulls back that. A mount. You can see there's a bit of flex in the torch there because it's only got one mount at the bottom. There you go, you can see it sort of running around there. I'll try and get a bit closer for you. So that's cutting that internal hole. Now it's raised up. Touch off again. And now we'll do the square on the outside. After it does this, I'm going to turn my plasma cutter on and we're going to see if this thing will actually cut. So you can see it gets right to the edge there. Hopefully it cuts. If it doesn't and it fails, well, I'll film it failing and you can... Um, I'll tell you what the problem is when I work that out as well. It's just going to finish that outside square there now. There you go, finish the job. So now I will, I will zero it again back to home and we'll... We'll do a test cut. All right, no time like the present to do a test cut. Um, I'll just turn the plasma cutter on first. Let's just flick that baby on. Um, this is only a plasma 35, quick cut 35 or easy cut 35. So I'm turning up the maximum power there just so we can see what happens. Um, I better make sure I put my ground cable on. I see a lot of people make that mistake and don't actually connect it up. So I'm just going to connect it up to the plate at the front here somewhere just so it's connected. There you go, you can see my ground cable connected there. Um, right now we're going to hit this run the job. This button here, run the job again. And we're going to see if it cuts. If it cuts, happy days. If it doesn't, well, looks like we've failed. I'm going to have to do something else. Here we go. Let's see what happens. That's a, a start anyway. It's coming over to, to probe. Once it probes and comes back, it should do its pierce cut. <laughs> from it so it melts everything. It's probably not good for my engine to be sitting there either. Probe again to do the square. The 
looks like the torch is a bit too close to me. Let's see what happens. I don't think it penetrates the plate. Yeah, that didn't cut through the plate. It just um, it just looks like it etched it really. There was no no penetration through there, so it looks like it's probably too fast for um, for that cut. Now we've got to slow the the torch speed down and try it again. Okay, um, I hope I've worked out what was wrong. I checked my. Um, compressor and I had the compressor um, speed, uh, compressor pressure turned right down because I was using a um, pneumatic nail gun the other day. So I'm going to try the cut again and see if it does it with no other changes, just um, compressed air pressure change. So we're going to hit that, run the job again. We're going to try and run it over the same cut position. Hopefully it cuts in the right spot. We'll see what happens. See what happens here, right? Eh? You can see where it etched it last time. Hopefully, it'll probe it there and do the cut like it's. Nope. Still not cutting through. It's just scratching the surface again. So I'm going to stop that. Okay, after a lot of testing, um, I think I worked out that it's my consumables. I have a 0.8 of a millimetre tip in there, and that's probably a little bit thin for this for the speed I'm cutting at on this 6 millimetre plate. So I just dropped it down to 1 mil plate, and we're going to give it another test and see if it cuts. If it cuts well, which you can see there's a bit of a trial cutage in the background there, but I hit the end stop and it made a mess. So I'm going to do a trial cut now. If this works, I'll buy a bit of 3 mil plate tomorrow and I'll, I'll try the cuts again. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, you can see it moving over to its probe position. So it should cut that hole first. Um, I'll tell you what happened. I didn't have the ground on there. I'll just reset that and try again. Got a ground clamp on there now, let's see how it goes. Hopefully it'll run the same spot and do the same cut. Hopefully it keeps an arc going because it's going to cut down the groove that it already cut. There we go, it's cutting the circle part first. Press it up. Now it's going to cut the square section around the outside. Oh, you bastard. That's a failure. Don't know what happened there, but it pierced, but it didn't continue the cut. We might um, have to try that again.
see if it'll run that same cut around that same hole, see how accurate it is. See if it's um, accuracy there is okay. It should actually cut in that same hole, really. It's a little bit off. Nope. Well, I don't really want it to cut that hole anyway. I want it to cut the square. I can see that plate's a bit distorted, so it's um, running uphill and doesn't have torch high control on it. See what happens here. Seems to be cutting the square this time. Hopefully it continues the cut. There we go. Turn the air off, that's bloody noisy. Now let's just move that out of the way and have a look how it... Check out how it looks. Alright. Well it's not hot because I have I have a water pan underneath it, so um, that is a very accurate looking square with a very accurate looking circle cut in the middle of it. Um, do the normal <laughs> the normal check that everyone does. This doesn't have any, any dross on it at all, but I guess it's only one millimeter plate. I'm not sure if you can see the actual cut quality there, but it's bloody excellent. And you can see the piece that it left behind down there. Um, that's looking pretty good. So, I would say my consumable size versus the thickness of the plate is my main concern. You can see there's the actual second cut it completed. Over there, it's sort of... You can see that one just there. It hit the end stop here and it started jumping the belt. And you can see how it sort of hit the end stop, got a flat spot on the bottom of the circle. So it was really... It's probably the second complete cut that I was going to do, just the end stop or, or I didn't set my zero position prior to cutting before I um, did it so I'd call that a success. I'll get some better, I'll get some thinner plate and I'll get a different size tip for the um, for the plasma, I'll probably get um, what's a, that's a 0.8 of a millimetre nozzle in there at the moment, I'll get a, um, a one millimetre nozzle and we'll play around with that six mil plate again and we'll get that cut on there. All right. I guess I got to call it quits. I guess I got to call it quits. It's um getting pretty late at night now. It's, again, it's probably eleven o'clock at night. So there you go. That's that's my plasma cutter up and running. Um, pretty happy with how it's working. One mil plates, no real, um, nothing to really brag about. But once I get that cut in two, three, four mil plate. Even that six mil plate over there, I'll be pretty happy with it. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't forget, hit the like and subscribe button. Share it with your mates. Um, it's um, it's quite an achievement to build one of these yourself and have it actually work and start and start cutting. Um, kind of makes you a bit proud of stuff that you've done. And um, we'll give you another little look around on the plasma table there. That's um, me over the background playing with my phone. That's how the table looks. Don't want to make you seasick. Um, but yeah, that's how it's looking. And again, if I hit that, um, if I hit that home button on here, the zero button, it will um, take the torch. Oops, where did I take it to? Oh, that is the zero already. Um, yeah, so I guess what, what I'm saying is if I if I raise the Z axis and I continuously run it, let's go this way over here. I continuously run it out of position. You can tell I slowed the um, slowed the speed down. All right, and if I hit the zero, 
coordinate, it'll send it back to where it was there before. And that was the starting position for that cut that it did on that, um, on that test piece. So there you go, that's it up and running. Um, next